So I was born in Jerusalem, Israel, uh, to a conservative family. Uh, I graduated as most kids at age of 18, then went to the army. Uh, in the army, you know, in Israel, you have to go. You want to go, you don't want to go, you just go. So three years I finished as a sergeant, I was a tank commander, and I felt that martial art would be the way that would make me a better man. I'll be more in control, more disciplined. I knew that I was a mess. So I wanted to go to China, but in those days I couldn't go. So I saved some money and at the age of 23, I left Israel and went to Japan to learn the art of the ninja. Everybody thought I was nuts. I ended up staying in Japan for 21 years. I didn't expect that. I thought I'm just going to learn the art of the ninja and then go back to Israel and teach it. I just got my black belt, the first Dan, in the art of the ninja. Some of the stuff was new age stuff. And that caused me to think about life in a deeper aspect. And I realized that the art of the ninja is not fulfilling enough. It doesn't have the depth that I was seeking. I was starting to look to find the aura and see such stuff of new age. So I told my teacher of the ninjutsu that I'm sorry, but I have to leave. And I understood in that search that the real enemy is not other people around you. The real enemy is you yourself. And that's a battle that you're going daily. So I was looking for martial arts that will help me with that. And I found it after a few years of search. It was Japanese archery. It is an art that you're focused on finding peace and balance under the pressure of the bow. So I did that for a few years, um, but then I got married and that was the end of my martial arts career. The Japanese company that I was working for offered me a job in Belgium to be a president of a diamond company there to open a branch for them. That was the beginning of the end of my stay in Japan. And it turns out my marriage didn't work out, job didn't work out. And so at the age of 45, I came back to Israel broken. And so I had to ask money from my parents and to stay in my sister's house. It so broke me down, it so humbled me. And then I was working in Kumeran in the Dead Sea, it's a shop for tourists, when one blue day, this group from America came. And to my surprise, I see them holding hands and dance in the store. I mean, who is dancing in the store? I mean, come on, that's crazy. It hit me like a lightning in a blue day that this joy that I was seeing, I've never had it, never experienced it, never seen it even. I didn't have such joy and I knew that I want it and I need it. And then the manager of the shop introduced the pastor to me. That pastor named Devora looked at me and just says, you have a broken heart, you're running away, you're searching for the truth, you've been to new age stuff. No, whoa, whoa, wait a second, what's going on? How, how can she know all these things? Are you a fortune teller? So she got angry at me and she says, it's your God, the God of Avram, Isaac and Jacob that told me about you. Wait a second, what's going on here? She is the Christian, I'm the Jew here. How come she's using the name of my God? How come you know my God and I don't? An interesting answer was, it's because you never looked for him. I was always searching about what I want to do. I was the center. I was my own master. I was so self-focused, it was disgusting. She gave me her Bible, the Bible that has the New Testament and the Old Testament, the Tanakh, and it's in Hebrew and English. And she told me, that I need to read it, and also the New Testament. And if I won't read the New Testament, then God will know. After high school, most of us people don't open the Bible. And the religious Jews, they are focused on the Mishnah, the Gemara, the Talmud, the Kabbalah. Nobody is just focused on the Bible. She also asked me if she could pray for me. Nobody ever prayed for me. I mean, I just came out from Japan. Nobody's praying there unless someone died. So I said, yeah, sure. So she lay hand on me, and my heart here, and prayed. And I don't know what happened. It was like a jolt in me. Uh, 
what happened? What happened? So she told me, what you just had now, it was the uh, Lord changed your heart of stone to a heart of flesh. And so when I read in the New Testament, the scripture, I am the way, the truth, and the life, poof, it's all in one scripture, exactly what I'm seeking. I realize it all my life. I had been searching for the way. I was actually searching for Yeshua. And then when in Romans 1, uh, the scripture says, the gospel is first of all for the Jews. How is that possible? I mean, this is a book for Christians, not Jews. And you see, most Jews have this aspect of Christianity is a Catholic. All these big churches and the masses that you have, the holy cracker and holy water and everything is so holy there that it just scares you. So after reading the New Testament and just falling in love with Yeshua, I knew what I need to do. I don't want to beat around the bush anymore. I want to have Yeshua in me like you have Yeshua in you. What do I do? So what she told me was, you simply ask him. Boom, went down on my knees. It was in the parking lot behind King David Hotel. Raise my hands and ask him to come into my life. And since that moment on, my life has changed. And that's one of the things that I want to tell Christians. You don't need to come with scriptures. You don't need to be so knowledgeable about the Bible or to start uh, arguing with Jews about scriptures to show them that Yeshua was also in the Old Testament. No need to do that. And that scripture come alive, Roman 11, that you guys are provoke the Jews to jealousy. I was jealous of her, of that group of Christians that they have such joy. You're ambassadors of Christ. Just bring your love and your joy and the Jews will come to you. I know that's what happened to me.